It's another day of chaos and uncertainty on Capitol Hill. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene is not backing down from efforts to end Mike Johnson's speakership. It's gotten so bad that some Republicans are worried the fight could ultimately hand the gavel to House Minority Leader Democrat Hakeem Jeffries. But Greene believes she has her finger on the pulse of the Republican Party. I pretty much have the best view of how the base feels um, and what Republican voters want. It's not about whether you like President Trump or not. The Republican Party, Republican voters are supporting his policies, yet Mike Johnson's leadership has been completely opposite. So with just hours until Speaker Johnson heads to Mar-a-Lago to meet with Donald Trump, the question today is whether frustrated Republican centrists would back Jeffries just to end the cycle of dysfunction and inaction. Well, listen, if the chair is vacated, it's certainly possible you get a Democrat speaker because we've already demonstrated. I mean, I think 13 total members ran for speaker before I was elected. Um, and uh, there's, it'd be very difficult for anyone to get the votes. NBC's Ryan Nobles joins us from Capitol Hill. Also with us, Stuart Stevens, who was chief strategist for the 2012 Romney presidential campaign and is a senior advisor for the Lincoln Project. Good to have both of you here. Uh, Ryan, should Speaker Johnson be worried? Any stirrings moderate Republicans might jump ship? What's the mood there? Well, I think Speaker Johnson probably should be worried about losing his job, but I think the chances that the person that replaces him uh, are a Democrat are probably very slim. Uh, you know, the same problem that Republicans have would be the same problem Demo Democrats have in a situation like this. There just really isn't any appetite for bipartisanship when it comes to electing the Speaker of the House. And so Republicans still have two more votes uh, than the Democrats do, so it's likely that they would hold on to the Speakership, but it would be another brutal battle. I think the more likely scenario here is if Mike Johnson does move forward with putting Ukraine aid on the floor, putting the federal surveillance program on the floor and it passes, that maybe Democrats come to his rescue to at least avoid another cycle of trying to replace uh, a speaker uh, like they did the last time around uh, back in the fall. Listen to how Hakeem Jeffries phrased it uh, when he was asked the question, would Democrats come to Mike Johnson's rescue if the situation was right? Now, I've made the observation, not a declaration, the observation that if the Speaker were to do the right thing and allow the House to work its will with an up or down vote on the national security bill, that I believe that there are a reasonable number of Democrats who would not want to see the Speaker fall as a result of doing the right thing. Now, that is significant that the current Democratic leader is at least opening the door to the idea of a group of Democrats either sitting on the sideline or actively working to help Mike Johnson keep his job. So that may seem, Chris, like, oh, well, then he doesn't have to worry about this anymore. Uh, it's exactly the opposite, because what Mike Johnson really doesn't want is to hold on to a speakership at the behest of Democrats. That puts him in an even more difficult situation than the one he's already currently in. So he's standing still at this impasse right Right now, what he would really like to do is pass Ukraine funding, pass FISA reform without having to worry about a motion to vacate. That's not the current environment, though, that he's living in. Chris. Yeah, and I think the thing that Jeffrey said, uh, Stewart, that's so significant is he said the House uh, let the House work its will, right? Uh, imagine that. Marjorie Taylor Greene seems oblivious to the reality that supporting Trump's policies does not change the fact that there's a Democratic Senate and a White House. So why is she starting this fight? Look, I think this is a classic example of life imitating high school. So think about it. You know, Marjorie Taylor is the mean girl with the rich daddy who always got out of trouble. Mike Johnson, sort of that invisible guy who always wanted to belong, who was desperate to be accepted. And, and that's just really a toxic niche when it comes to, say, saving the world. And that's really what's at stake here. I mean, it's easy to look at Marjorie Taylor Greene. She's this incredibly unlikable person with that awful voice. I think she just sort of is one of these freak shows that runs through Congress. But she could change history. Because if the United States does not vote to support Ukraine, it is going to change history. It is going to be a pale over this country for generations and change the way Europe is. It's going to ch affect the way uh, China looks at Taiwan. This is big, historic, hinge in history stuff. And it's being left to the smallest of people. And really, the question I would ask Mike Johnson is, it, it, you, let's say you are a Christian. Take you at your word. 
How do you go to bed every night knowing that your weakness that night will kill innocent Ukrainian women and children and men sleeping in their beds? How do you live with that? Because that's what's happening. Well, one of the things he's going to have to do is talk to Donald Trump tomorrow. They're holding that event at Mar-a-Lago. How does he negotiate, navigate that? Look, um, it, it really comes to a question of you're, you're the inheritor of the legacy of the greatest generation, right? I mean, they pass this torch to you. And you're going to either honor that or you're going to honor the wishes of this guy from Queens who's having trouble making bail, who's on trial in multiple jurisdictions across the country. What do you want your legacy to be? Who do you think is going to be more admired? Who do you want to be? You want to be Liz Cheney or do you want to be like someone who gets voted out of Congress because he didn't do the right thing anyway? Um, I don't know, Mike Johnson. You would hope that somewhere inside there, there's enough decency and some sliver of courage to be able to stand up and try to defend innocent women and children who are getting murdered by Russians. Stuart Stevens, always good to have you on the program. Thank you. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.